company, baby. Uh, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your one-stop shop for all things Medicare, Medicare insurance as well as life insurance. Uh, if you have Medicare, we would love to review your plan. There are always changes every year to it. and You should always, always review your Medicare and review it with a local agent because whether you get it nationally or you buy it locally, you get the same policy at the same price. But with us, if you've got a question, if you've got a problem, you can come to us, 304 304- 283-0864-304-283-0864, Bodwell Insurance Solutions.com. He Thank is you, my Rob. Medicare go to guy, John the Boss. And uh, Matt Miller, FCA, has got some stuff coming up, too. Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Speaking of which, I was at your campground site, Washington Monument State Park. Ah, yes. Over the weekend, we did a little of the Appalachian Trail that yeah. goes through there, too. That was pretty cool, but that's a wonderful place. Uh, and uh, that monument height, man, you can yeah. see all the way to Pennsylvania from the top of that it has monument. an incredible view up there. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. What do you have coming up? Uh, we've got a golf tournament on May the 8th. Still have a little bit of room open, so if you were a business owner and would like to put a huddle in, you'll get a, a sign at one of the holes. You'll get four golfers in the tournament and uh, all of the amenities that go with that. And then June 6th through the 9th is Power Camp. That's a sports camp for kids up at Spring Mills. And the 20th through the 23rd of June, our first ever outdoors camp. We'll be at the Back Creek Valley Bow and Gun Club, shooting 22s, archery, fishing, and a camping, hiking uh, part as well. And uh, you can find out information on all of those and register at epwvfca.org. Very nice. In studio, City Councilman Jason Baker. JB, good to have you here. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Uh, Mayor Knowles, by the way, will be in studio tomorrow morning at 835 to counter everything that you just said today. (laughs) We get along a little bit, so we might <laughs> yeah, be okay. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> hey, are uh, you running for re-election next time around? Absolutely. What made you decide to do it? Still a lot of outstanding projects that uh, I want. The Woodbury project uh, will uh, need the phase two part. Hopefully it'll, the phase one will be done. And um, some other major projects, Thomas Lake. Um, and I think I still have some things to take care of. You running for city council or are you running for mayor? I'm running for my ward seat. Ward, ward seat. Five. All right, very good. Hey, uh, let's talk about some of the projects you just mentioned and uh, t- take me to the next phase of some of these, including the Frog Hollow Path. Where are we with that? That's very exciting. Um, the paving has been mostly completed other than the entrances into the different roads as they're going because they'll be concreted. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the <clears> – <throat> sorry. Um, some of the fencing has been started. Um, our stormwater – management system that'll be on the corner of um, Burke Street and Water Street is uh, well on its way. Um, We will be closing Burke Street for a few weeks, roughly around May 8th, um, so that we can tie in the stormwater um, across the street and from uh, the underpass. And so hopefully, and I I was, uh, I I, uh, jokingly tried to get them to do it for West Virginia Day to be open for West Virginia Day, but it'll be really close to right there. They, they want to say around July 1st, CEC mm-hmm. is saying, um, hopefully a little bit earlier. But uh, now I'm really excited about the Frog Hollow project. I think that's a really nice tie-in um, that has been a little bit of an eyesore, to be honest with you, you know, with homeless and stuff like that. For that to be all cleaned up is pretty exciting for the city of Martinsburg. Matt Miller. Yeah, tell us more. I, I hear a lot about Frog Hollow. How far, wh- where is it kind of located? Where does it begin and end? So pretty much right in front of Martinsburg High School. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a railroad bridge that we have not gotten evaluated to use, but probably won't need to be opened. Um, and it and that path runs, its own path will run all the way to Burke Street. And then the idea is from there to be a little bit more of a street path that will tie in through downtown and then mm-hmm. it eventually go um, Raleigh Street and uh, tie into our other path that we're talking about um, right across from um, on Queen Street that will take us to Oatsdale Park. Great. And a, a path for hiking, walking, biking. Hiking. Will there be some things along the path? Uh, you know, I know there are some types of paths where, right, you might jog for a half a mile and then jump off and do something. Is that sort of thing a part of this? Um, there will be some signage and stuff. Okay. There's some there's some things that we're working on to uh, dress it up. But I think the biggest thing is we didn't want to get in the weeds about 
figuring out every aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Let's get the path open. It's nice. I mean, it's I mean, it's ten foot wide. That's it's a pretty wide path. That, I mean, that's a nice path. Um, and you know, I'm sure we'll figure out issues that we mm-hmm. come with it. Um, but uh, you know, recreational um, biking paths mm-hmm. are huge economic boost. They uh, open up areas and uh, make a huge difference in the uh, in the cities that they're in. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, I will say that the uh, the only other thing about this path is there is a small piece of it um, from where we have done our path to the path that is on. Um, Route 9 going towards Ranson, okay. that the county has not necessarily uh, okayed for it to be completed. So I would say put some pressure on your county council people to get that done because you, we get that small little piece done. All right, let's, you, let's, you let's give me lo- some details, baby. Give me some details. Where, where is it located? Right. Well, so right across from Orangeburg High School, you yeah. would, when you're going out Queen Street, um, there's um, projected to have a path that would run from that point right at the bridge that would connect into the walking path on Route 9. From the bridge to Route 9, and that's county property? That's county. County is the uh, is in, is where it needs to be there. And, right. then, and then at that point, you literally could get on at the train station and take a bike ride all the way to Ransom. All right, Wit, you know how to pave stuff, baby. We got to get that path. Is that supposed to be a paved path? Yeah, yes. Just and then there's this and there's this paved already on Route Nine. So right. I know you know some people. So you know, <laughs> start putting some pressure on them that we want that done. Come on, Wit. You get that paving company going there. Come on, baby. Absolutely. Get that finished, Mr. Bogwell. Um, I gotta I gotta ask a little bit about the the downtown um, where you're coming past King Street. Excuse me, down Queen Street right before you hit the underpass. There's the vape shop there. I know they had the big bust a few weeks ago. And on the other side, we have those buildings that they've been working on and talking about. I don't know a, a brewery, a this, a that. What is up with that block? Because that is the block where you come into town. And you have a, the vape shop, you have the stuff that's not done. What is up with all of that? So the stuff on the right where um, the vape shop is, hopefully um, that will be developed with the amount of money that we are spending on that gateway and cleaning up. And actually, I was in a meeting yesterday with uh, the Roundhouse. Um, on the left side, there's been some movement. Um, you know, there's there's smaller businesses, you know, but they are really interested in our in our our path that'll go across the creek there, um, which they're hoping will help tie in and clean up some of that area that'll get them to Oatsdell, which will be a nice tie in for like a brewery. You know, I'm sure that you have been to a few that there's oh. there's plant you know where you can move around a little bit is very common with the outdoor breweries and stuff like mm-hmm. that so being able to clean that up is pretty big there's there's also um some movement on real estate that that's happening really close to that area that i can't speak of other than that and um, which should be pretty exciting for uh, that area also what about when you go over that that little bridge um you go up behind those you go over that little bridge and at the end of where maple ends there's that big building there i think there was talk of putting in a restaurant and a distillery is that still in the works i think they're still working on that i think they are actively investing in that property yeah i mean that was a i mean that was a herculean task to to change that over i was just wondering where it was i know they're going to get it open i was just wondering because i mean we so much of our so so many people go outside of martinsburg and thankfully we're we're getting some things here in berkeley county that you can go to like black draft places like that but we just i mean ways we can keep our money here and attract people from other areas to come here and spend their money absolutely and i think a lot of that has to do and i don't want to be a i don't want to be a broken horse here but you know the here's the thing i think the trails make a big difference in that because now you're tying in areas where I can go by foot. And, you know, it's one thing to have one brewery or it's one thing to have one type of restaurant. Um, but to be able to walk that distance, you know, if you're thinking like Harper's Ferry and being able to do that, I think that actually opens up areas that by car have always been a little bit, you know, Maple Avenue is Maple Avenue, especially at that point. But, you know, if you could park 
out at Queen Street and, you know, the little antique shop there and and then walk back to to the brewery that has been proposed um, and then go on. And, and there, if there's other things along that path, I think that that really starts adding to uh, the walking traffic. And that's what you want. I mean, it, car traffic's one thing. you got to deal with that through stoplights and stop signs and all that. But you get people on their feet, it's a lot easier to sell them stuff. Jason, I want to give you credit because you just invented a new mixed metaphor. I understand. The, the broken horse. You got a broken record and a broken dead horse. It's not only a broken horse, that's the best one ever. Call me out on that one there. I understand. It was great, though. <laughs> I don't want to be a broken I've never heard that, but it was awesome. I'm going to use that. I don't uh, want to be a broken horse. I like that. Guys, you we know, got to work harder today. We don't want to be a broken horse. Because they'll shoot you if you're a broken horse. You don't want that. You know, you got to you got to stay upright here, big guy. Don't let them know that leg's broken there. Uh, Councilman Jason Baker is our guest here on the program. And uh, out of Ward 5, he will be running for re-election, as he stated previously uh some of the other projects that the city's working on we want to get to also go ahead absolutely um one of the ones that i'm most excited about or well woodbury would be my most excited because that's going to impact my people in my ward but have you made any progress on woodbury avenue um we did the council approved um a thirty-five thousand dollar um engineering so that we could do the engineering through phase one is that for a study or from actual for actual work that's for actual work okay yeah we're way on um we, we got a little bit of a hiccup with the uh, post office that we're hoping to work through because that is a urban residential route, which, well, you know me, I'm not going to, which is crap because um, it's in the city. And at the end of the day, get out of the car and walk the dang thing. Mm-hmm. You want re- urban If you want a residential route on the car, then that's, in, that's the county stuff. Um, but we got to work through that a little bit. But that is pretty much the only hiccup um, the council – 100 percent um endorsed the idea loves it um i think it's a huge um safety um for woodbury avenue and i'm very hopeful that uh, we will see progress hopefully by like august september and uh with the phase one Mm -hmm. which, which isn't as much in depth of excavation and stuff like that it's more about separating the road Um, lining it, putting some um, barriers up to make the uh, bike path uh, safe. You know, and I go back to a path. You know, we're going to have that on Woodbury. So what barriers is my Jersey barriers, basically? No, more like the um, what you see on the interstate with the uh, deflectors. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, the Jersey wall looks like crap. It does. So, I agree. I was hoping you weren't going to do that. Well, and, and there's no area in the county that, that has more kids congregating than that Woodbury Avenue sector. I mean, between the between the Lambert Pool and the, and the Berkeley 2000 Rec Center. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll say it again. I don't know if you were here when we were talking about Woodbury last time I was in, but um, we had a traffic study on that road, and there is 10,000 cars a day that are going through that road not stopping these these aren't people that are that are living in that residential mm-hmm. and the thing that a lot of people wouldn't rec- think about is woodbury avenue is a residential road it is no different than any other single road this isn't route 45 you know queen street king street raleigh street um winchester avenue they also have route you knows that are part of the state there's there's state routes right they're they're designed to handle that they you know they have a bigger budget than we do woodbury avenue is just a street that has been absolutely abused um for years um and the sad part about this is there was a really weird thing that made it a little bit of a fight a nice fight with the police department when i brought it up because i wanted their endorsement and what the thing was was we weren't having accidents on woodbury avenue there was all this traffic, but for whatever reason, they weren't causing accidents. Well, over the last six months, there's probably been over a dozen, and and half of those, five or six of those, were pretty severe accidents at this point. Are they speed related? I don't know the particulars. Each one of them, um, some of them are. You know, when you're on a street compared to a route, the distance away from your sight distance, you know, a bush, a tree, mm-hmm. a wall, a fence, um, you know, they're guided by being on Route 11, Route 9. Um, on a street, we don't have that same distance away, so I think it's probably more th- more of that. I know one in particular was coming off of Northwestern onto it. Um, the lady who did it, it's an older lady, 
Um, and I happened to be close when it happened. I was just coming through, and I stopped to make sure she was okay. And she says, the first thing she said to me, I didn't see it coming. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, you know, I, I'm glad that we're moving forward and the council endorsed that. Um, but hopefully within the next month or six weeks, we'll have a clear answer from the post office um, about being able to work with the mail. And um, But, yeah, no, I think it's, it's exciting. Um, the other thing that's pretty exciting that I – that I hear about a lot is Thomas Lake um, and we are progressing well with the phase one which is um, a walk you know a path through that you can go around and see the lake because a lot of people that have lived here in Martinsburg for a long time have never really actually seen the lake been here 27 years where's the lake <laughs> no idea <laughs> so the lake sets in between um, Martin Street and, or yeah martin street and kentucky avenue okay i do know where it is yeah, the, never seen it you though, can but fit, i do you, know where it is you can illegally fish in there can't you yeah well i, I grew up two blocks away so i'm not going to incriminate myself <laughs> but i will say that i've probably seen it before i was a city councilman but yeah. it, it is a if anybody gets an opportunity and eventually everybody's going to have an opportunity mm -hmm. i would highly recommend it you will when you go in there it is nothing like you'll ever see in the city of Martinsburg. Mm -hmm. um, it's a hidden gem, man. It really is. Have you seen? Have yeah. you, how do you get? How do you get there? Um, or do we not want to put that out there right now and have some sort of? Well, right now, no one can really go in without you know being guided in. Mm -hmm. But uh, but hopefully, really soon, it's going to be opened. Um, you awesome. know, for a walking path, and then phase two will be the water part. Um, you know, there's a lot of figuring that we have to do with the water to make sure, you know, if we're given permission for people to touch the water, not saying there's anything in the water, you know, there, there's regulations right. that, that have to be maintained that make sure that we're safe. There aren't any sharks or anything in there, alligators? There is no crazy? sharks, but right. there is stories that, um, Loch Ness Monster. that I've heard of uh, um, catfish that are size of cars and everything else that are in there. Wow. Wow. Um, and of course, the interesting thing of Thomas Lake is the water's cold because um, it's deep. So that's another, you know, and there's actually a beachy area off Thomas Lake because that's how they came in and out. And it's became a beach. But if you set it, if you set there at Thomas Lake, you don't think you're inside of a city. Mm -hmm. And I I'm sure there is some cities out there that have something similar, but I don't know of any local, especially locally. Yeah, sure. I want to I want to see it. Absolutely. That's uh, City Councilman Jason Baker. Appreciate you stopping by, man. Anytime. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it, and I appreciate your newly invented mixed metaphor. That was awesome. Forever going forward now. I understand. Anytime I hear it from you, You'll you know, I'll, like, I'll smile a little horse. bit. <laughs> that was great, man. Hey, uh, we have a uh, final minute coming back with, if you don't mind, just hang out there in the commercial break. We'll be back with a uh, final minute with City Councilman Jason Baker on the program. Thanks. The first